Welcome to the Billionaire Belief Show. This is Dane, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Today's topic, the fundamentals of producing income. Why that topic? Well, at the end of the day, income is the lifeblood of our, our, our wealth creation journey. Without income, we're dead in the water. We're spinning our wheels. We aren't really going anywhere. So today I just want to talk about first what income is, the three types, and then we're going to kind of dive a little bit into each type of income. And from there, in you know, later episodes, you know, we'll kind of dive into each one individually. Um, the goal is I'm going to bring on some guests to help us discuss those, these three types of income, I should say, and just give uh, obviously some some better perspective. And also, too, uh, obviously, you know, new stories are always great. So um, let's talk about it. So income, three types. What are they? More often than not, uh, growing up in school, this information isn't passed down to us. It isn't handed to us. In some circles, you know, it's by design. Uh, in others, it's it's not because that's what the school is there for. That's what they'll tell you. But all in all, um, income, and we live in a capitalistic economy. We live in a capitalistic world. We live in a capitalistic society. Uh, money makes the world go around in regards to getting the things that we want and we need. At the end of the day, you know, money is the lifeblood to our survival. Uh, well, I'll say money is the lifeblood to the, the standard of living and the quality of our survival. It, it is it is it is mandatory at the end of the day. It is what it is. That's the way the system is set up. You're allowed to feel how you want to feel about it, but that is the game. So with any other game that we experience in our here in, in our time here on earth, it's about understanding what the game is, figuring it out, and then excelling at it. And so for you, as you go through your journey and your walk in life and as you decide to want to build wealth, uh, producing income is going to be a major component of that. It's going to be a major activity of that because, I mean, the game of wealth uh, defined, I should say, is the activity and the process of a producing income. So building up your, your income line items figuring out different ways you can earn income. And we'll talk about the three types in a little bit, but um, you want to be able to produce income. And then once you have produced that income, then you want to obviously save some of it so that you can invest it for growth. You want to use it as a means of uh, protecting your future self as well as your family and generations um, from life happening. Um, so your investments in a sense that those represent future generational wealth, uh, income protection for your loved ones when you're not here, because nobody wants to go to work at the end of the day. But we understand that we have to take care of our families and we don't want to feel scared and afraid because we don't know where our next dollar is coming from, which is going to allow us to buy that meal, to be able to pay for that rent and or that mortgage to make sure that kids have the decent health care, make sure you have decent health care, make sure that you're able to afford quality garments so that you guys can be able to go out into the world and do whatever it is that you guys want to do from sports to hiking to dinners out, uh, Scott, whatever it is, whatever your thing is, you feel me like we, we all need this money. We all need it to, to, to allow us to be able to afford the quality and standard of life that we desire for ourselves. And so it's really just really improving your relationship with money, improving your improving the way you feel about it. I mean, that's where you have to begin um, when it comes to income production. You, you have to get comfortable with wanting more and not feeling guilty about it because Guilt is that invisible barrier that is unknowingly keeping a lot of us from moving forward in this department of our life. We just feel bad. We feel guilty because we're we're comparing what we have to what someone less who has less than us. And the reality of the situation is and that's what life is all about, ladies and gentlemen, reality. It is what it is now. 
I say it is what it is from the within the context of reality is reality. If you put your hand over fire, you will get burned. If you do not work, you will not eat. The only caveat is, yes, there are government public programs that will allow you certain benefits and resources. And yes, but I'm talking specifically to able bodied, able bodied individuals who aspire to build wealth so that when it's all said and done, they're old, they're past their working years and are their untimely death or in the event of a catastrophic injury. Now they're permanently disabled and or mentally disabled, whatever happens, you as a man or you as a woman want to know that your family will not have any sort of financial distress, no financial burdens because you, you took care of that department. And so this is who this message is for. That is who this message is for at Billionaire Belief. So going back, produce an income. You know, in income is important, ladies and gentlemen. And so you just got to have to work through your own stuff to get out any sort of sludge and grime that you have in your money department. But at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best version of yourself, because obviously by becoming the best version of yourself, one of the byproducts of that is going to be an increase in value to the marketplace. And in return, they will reward you with higher fees, higher salaries higher returns, which means at the end of the day, more money in your bank account, i.e. a major bank account. And that's what it's all about, baby. You feel me? It's about building that major bank account. So let's 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 in our heart and in our mind, let's really dive deep into our our, our, our financial department and, and do some cleanup. We have to really evaluate the lessons that we learned as children from our family as well as the lessons that we've learned from the dominant society, the status quo about producing income. Because like you and me growing up, at the end of the day, we all were, we're all told, you know, the, the, the formula is simple, quote unquote. You know, we were all pretty much told this story. Just go to school, get good grades so you can go to a good college and then get some more good grades so that you can get a good job. And with that good job, you're going to be able to buy a house, you're going to be able to start a family, get a wife and kids, or, you know, get a husband and some kids, and then you guys are going to be living happily ever after. That's the dream that most of us are told as children. And so for some of us, that's why we chose or, or, or decided to, quote unquote, do good in school while we, while we decide to accelerate because we ultimately misinterpreted the message. We 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 didn't under, we didn't really understand what, what we were being told unfortunately and 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 the irony of it is is the people who were telling us about it really didn't know what they were saying but it was said it was written as they would say and and it and it was what it was and when it came specifically to income it was always go get a job and then if a person had a job it was like well go get a good job and and that was basically everyone's lesson that was our financial education quote unquote air quotes if you're if you were watching me but that was our financial education go get a job and we were told that the more education that we have that will that will uh, that that would mean the better job we would get and so that's why we did what we did you feel me like we we some of us excelled you know what i'm saying like we 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 were high performers and um but <clears throat> You know, as we learned, once we crossed that graduation stage and had to enter the real world, or, or maybe before that, you know, high school for some of you. Uh, unfortunately for me, I wasn't allowed to work when I was uh, in high school, and by allowed, I mean that I I wouldn't have been afforded the means to be able to have a job. I.e., if my mama said I, I can't work, but I decide I'm gonna get a job on my on my own. Well, if I'm out when I'm not supposed to be out, then where am I at for one? And then two, like, how am I going to get back in the house if she changed the lock? So my mom didn't want me to work. It was what it was. Um, but that was still part of my financial education because she said, you know, let, let me worry about the money and you just worry about getting good grades so you can get into a good college. 
And then once I got into the quote unquote good college, it was just like, you know, let us we'll, we'll focus on making sure that you have the resources to, you know, make sure you're in state, you, you stay enrolled and you have, you know, a decent living. And we'll just but but, you know, at that point, I was just like, you know, screw this. You know, I'm about to I got to I got to get it. I got to get something for myself because I want to do more than what the, the monthly stipend that they were giving me. And and so boom, you know, that was that was another money lesson that I that I was going through. Like I I I told I basically realized that you know, I wanted to do stuff. You know, I'm in college, so I I wanted to go out with my friends, movies, you know, spring break trips to Mexico. Um, you know, if you're you if you're listening, you've been to college, you know what I'm talking about. So at the end of the day, I needed income just like you needed income. And so like naturally, most of us just thought I just need to get a job. And so going back to the three types of income, getting a job, that's called earned income. So when we fill out that W-4 and we get a W-2 at the end of the year, earned income. So that's what I'm talking about right now. You know, most of our education about how to produce income revolves around producing earned income, but that's only one type of income. But most of us never learn this, and that's unfortunate. That's a travesty. Most of us never learn that there's actually two more ways of earning income. Now, here's the funny thing about that. We don't necessarily get taught these other two types of income that we can earn, but we always hear about it and it's always right in our face. Because we're watching the movies, we're watching the, the daily media that's talking about such and such celebrity made X amount of millions of dollars for this role. And we're seeing, you know, on the stock market business channels, uh, this stock went up, Facebook this, uh, Amazon that, Apple this. And so we're, we're, we're seeing this stuff in front of us and we're hearing all these foreign words and we're, we're, we're hearing people tell us how hard it is. And so... All this information is we're absorbing it and but based upon how we're all conditioned at the end of the day, just for being a human being, it's just in our nature to naturally you know, go for the lowest hanging fruit and getting a job is what is advertised as the lowest hanging fruit. And so based on the lowest hanging fruit, then there's like levels to that. You know what I'm saying? So then you have the good job, and you know, you have the bad job. But all in all, a job is earned income. Where you're basically getting a W-4 and a W-2. Uh, that Those are the basic financial documents that you're going to have to fill out in order to get that good job so that you can earn some income. So now that you know, and we well, let me take that back. <laughs> We've already known about earned income. So let's now talk about the other two forms of income that are available to each and every one of us out there. Uh, it's just about us once again knowing what it is at our dis knowing what is at our disposal. So the next type of income that I want to talk about is called portfolio income, and portfolio income is the type of income that you earn from owning assets such as paper assets, and paper assets are stocks, they're bonds, they're um, notes of some sort you know anything that 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 has a you know future you know value on it and the the the, the actual income that you earn is what is called interest for example from your div uh, from your from your bonds and then you have dividends from the stocks and throughout the year you will get payments for just owning pieces of paper and in most instances in this in this day and age it's just you know uh, you know words and let words and letters on a screen but at the end of the day it is what it is you know you portfolio income that's another type of income that we can earn and a lot of quote-unquote rich and wealthy people that is their primary source of income portfolio income they own so much stock they own so many bonds. They own so many notes that it affords that that the interest and dividends alone allow them to afford the type of lifestyle that they're living. And so they live. <laughs> but that's 
a type of income that we all have access to. It's just about, once again, learning how to play the game and realizing that in the short term, yes, there's going to have to be some sacrifices made. You know, you are going to have to put some time into a learning how to do this stuff and then setting up the systems and that, that are going to allow you to generate it. Or if you just save some money, you can eventually invest in someone either showing you how to do it or invest in somebody doing all that work for you so you could just more so operate. But at the end of the day, portfolio income. Um, you look at a, a, a guy like Warren Buffett, for example, his, his Berkshire Hathaway. You know, he he owns a significant share. So I mean, it's a, a, more than likely a majority interest in Berkshire Hathaway, obviously. And, you know, through that through that holding company, you know, that's how he manages his investments in, in, in stocks, specifically in uh, well, he invests in stocks that's that, that pay dividends. So every every quarter, every three months, every month, more than likely, you know, he's getting dividends and then he's putting those dividends back to his shareholders. And that's easy income to earn in regards to you don't have to trade any time for your money. You don't have to trade any time for money because you, you you like once again you you own an asset that is producing the money for you. All you have to do is just tell them where to send the dividends. That's it. You you fill out you 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 you, you, you they send you a piece of paper for you to put your your your, your account number and your routing number on it so that they can send you your dividends, and that's all it boils down to. And so. You have an opportunity to earn portfolio income, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a matter of if you're going to be, you're willing to put the work into it and get past the guilt of wanting to be better, as well as, you know, the 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 learned helplessness. I would say in regards to like I can't learn this or I don't have time to learn this. Like get get out of that mentality. Break yourself from it. You know, because that's all it is, is just an idea in your mind. You just haven't been able to separate what's really happening from the emotions of what you think is happening and will happen. So, like, once again, that's what I say is in wolf success, whatever you want to call it, it's an inside game. So you got to get past it. Now, last but not least, passive income. That's the third type of income. Now, the, the biggest difference between passive income and portfolio income is that passive income is more so generated, I would say, A, on a, uh, on a more consistent basis, for example, like monthly as opposed to quarterly um, as well. And, and it comes from owning it comes from owning assets. Uh, so it comes from owning an asset like a business system and or and or the all of the stock of a business system and then you've hired a management team to run your business for you but then every month in a sense like I say you we either you either get a, a check because of your quote unquote position in the company or you just take a check at the end of the year you know pay up in in a sense kind of like dividends in a sense but uh but passive income comes from owning things like rental properties it comes from owning things like um in, like once again, uh, a business franchise. So if you let's just say you owned a, a subway franchise uh, every month, you know what I'm saying whatever's left over after paying your lease, paying your labor, and then paying your uh, operating expenses, whatever's left over after that, the net profit. That's all you. And um, last but not least, um, what's what's something, like I said, you can own a, 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 a small. I mean, your own dry cleaners. You can set up your own dry cleaners and whatever. Once again, whatever's left over, that's all you. And so with the ultimate takeaway from the fundamentals of producing income is you a understanding that you have multiple options and b understanding that you have the skills to produce the two other types of income that you didn't even know about. And three, it's going to take it's going to take the same amount of time. So all the time that you spend worrying about how you're going to produce portfolio and passive income is time you could be spending learning how to produce portfolio and passive income. But once again, you're going to have to get past the guilt of wanting to better yourself as well as the, the, the embarrassment that you think that you're going to endure for asking somebody to help you. 
So get past that, that pride or whatever you want to call it, however you want to define it. You feel me? Like you got to get past it and know that there's people out there that want to help. A lot of them are going to require that you pay, but some of them aren't. And the reason why the people require you to pay is because they have ascended to a level where they realize now that money, I mean, that time is the most valuable asset. So they don't want to. So their time isn't anybody's to fuck off. So that's why they make you pay so that you can have some skin in the game so that you are present on that call or in that that video session or at that event on that face to face. They want to make sure you're there. No distractions, 100 percent focused. And so that's why they make you pay. But it's going to be well worth it because, once again, like I said earlier, paying them allows you to steepen your learning curve so you can accelerate the process as opposed to just trying to figure it all out by yourself. Now, I've done it both ways. Uh, I typically lean to trying to figure it out myself because, A, I want to go through the process and, B, I want to be able to share what I find about the process with others so that they can go go past it. I mean, go through it a lot smoother, get from point A to point B a lot faster. But all in all, you know, that's the major takeaway from producing income when it comes to the fundamentals and the fundamentals. Once again, you got to earn, you got to produce. So you're either going to be if you're going to get that job. And this is the thing you have to understand now, ladies and gentlemen, about a job. You know, we'll, we'll say this before we wrap up. But um, and this is something that I'm I'm personally working through, you know, my, myself. It's like, you know, I, I work at a company that's a service based business. And so we generate income through selling a service. So people con- we have to contact people on a monthly basis to remind them that a service is due so that the so that we can come out and perform the service and send them an invoice so they can send us a check or call us and pay with a credit card. And then we use that income to obviously once again pay our rent, pay our insurances, pay all of our uh, certification fees, pay our, our labor. And whatever's left over is there for the business owner. So that's passive income for him. In addition to you know, the, the quote unquote check he gets for his uh, his title or job at the company. But all in all, it's 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 I'm 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 already engaged in the activities of selling a, a product. But the question is, is like I can either sell the product for somebody else, which is perceived to be. A lot let a lot more safe and less risky as opposed to selling a product on my own, which is perceived to be a lot more risky and less safe. But the reality is, is if you are willing to show up every day to sell a product for a company, then why can't you show up every day and sell a product for your own company? And once again, that's something that I'm personally working through right now to to ele- to once again to ascend, get to the next level, and um. Really, you know, what I'm saying accelerate my progress down the uh, the pipeline, but it's just like you, you just got to get over the mental hurdle and you got to and, and you get over the mental hurdle by just doing it, just getting involved, like start asking questions, start reaching out to people, you know, make use of that Instagram, reach out to these, reach out to some of these businesses, financing these investment pages. You feel me? Like find out, you know, how they're doing it. Figure out what you want to do and reach out to people who are doing that and just ask them, you know, ask them for help. Have something of value to to give them or if they're asking for something of value, you know, negotiate accordingly. But go out there and put the work in. But once again, to to recap, to wrap it up, passive income. I mean, uh, not passive income, but the fundamentals of producing income. There are three types of income that you can earn. The first kind is earned income. The second kind is portfolio income. And the third kind is passive income. You earn you you uh, you earn earn income by trading your time for money. You own portfolio income by using your money to own paper assets that allow you to earn money, such as interests and dividends. And then lastly, once again, you, you use your money to build a system that generates money. Period. And that's it. That's the fundamentals of producing income. Those are your options. That's all you have at your disposal. You have more than enough time. Yes, most of us will start off and earn income. But in order to add those other two types of income, it's just going to be us 
getting in the game and realizing that in the short term, yes, I'm going to have to be focused. I'm not going to be able to go hang out with the homies. I'm not going to be able to go, you know, watch my favorite TV shows and go to the movie, whatever entertainment. You know, I'm not going to be entertaining myself. I'm going to be enriching myself and empowering myself so I can earn more. Period. So it's just a mind game. And it's about you getting in that game. So, fundamentals of producing income, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good about it. I hope you feel good about it. And I hope you got some incredible value from it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. As always, you got the comment section below. Drop me a line. You know, let me know what you what you think about this. I would love your feedback. You know, if there's some topics that you'd like for me to cover or something that you think I should dive a little bit deeper in. Like I said, let me know. I'm doing it for you. What I'm learning and implementing and learning from, like, I'm just coming here to share with you on the Billionaire Belief Show. So, as always, follow us at BBWCN on Instagram. While you're there, make sure you sign up. I mean, we'll make sure you go get your free copy of the Financial uh, Education Study Guide so that uh, you can obviously have that. That's some good game for you. Just the basics once again. And then from there, be on the lookout. I got some real incredible products coming your way um something to help you save more money a system to help you save more money i should say a system to help you invest more money a system to help you ascend a, a system to help you get to the next level so be on the lookout for that you know i, I plan on dropping something for you soon you know and uh, as always you know if you have any questions reach out to me i love you make it a great day peace